This episode of Two Bears, One Cave is also brought to you by Satva. S-A-A-T-V-A. Go to satva.com slash YMH. You get a $225 credit towards the mattress of your choice. You deserve to sleep comfortably and, and elegantly on beautiful mattresses. They make uh, the luxury firm Satva mattress is the kind of mattress you'd find at a luxury hotel. They have a memory foam mattress under their line called Loom and Leaf. And they even have the best thing I've ever had, a mattress that rises and lowers. It sits up for you at Solair, S-O-L-A-I-R-E, uh, all under the Satva brand. So listen, environmentally friendly, award-winning uh, customer support. These guys have mattress takeaway service, white glove delivery. They take care of you. I've had three of their mattresses and they're phenomenal. Go to Satva, S-A-A-T-V-A dot com slash Y-M-H and start with $225 credit towards your purchase. Start the show. One cave. Speaking of hot and looking good, looking good. He's Bert Kreischer. I'm Tom Segura. But let's just put the pedal to the metal and go. go, go, go. This is a perfect way to start off this show. Twelve years in the making. This is gonna be a fucking shit show. Shit. Everyone's gonna, it's gonna, everyone's gonna hate us. A hundred percent. Everyone does say I say nightmare wrong. I know. Like everyone said, and you're the first person to correct me. I'm fucking. I'm 42, and this is a- <laughs> <laughs> your birthday's coming up. Not that long not, from now. In uh, November, yeah. And you'll be 40. Can I? I want a surprise. I want a are world you, surprise party. Oh, you're gonna be 48. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to be. You don't want to be? Uh uh-uh. uh Why? The ends turn at 50 in August. So you're only two years apart. Yeah. You know how tough it is fucking a 50 year old. How? You haven't fucked her yet. I know, but I feel like I'm already there. She just is so like married in her ways of how it should go. How should it go? Just like, uh, you know, we had that conversation. Did we have a conversation about sucking dick? The yeah. Other day? Okay. Yeah. Cause you, you, if I, if I may quote you, you said, uh, now that woman knows how to suck a dick. <laughs> she really does. Yeah, she really yeah, does. Yeah. I think my other quote was the Me Too movement really fucked up blowjobs. Yeah. The, <laughs> but she, um, we talked about blow. I said I braced her because I was like, "Hey, just so you know, you know, I kind of lit you up about dick sucking." She was like, "Yeah, I don't care." And and then I I she she said, "Now this is a such a good workaround." She's like, "Your dick's too big," and I was like, "Okay." <laughs> She's like, "It it hurts my jaw to do it for that long," and I was like, "Well, what if you just did a little bit?" She goes, "I can do it for a little bit." And I was like, "Yeah, do a little bit, and then get me ready, and then let's have sex." So that's our new thing. Yeah, so it worked out. This this podcast is saving lives, saving marriages. Dude, that's a fucking home run. It's a fuck. Fuck yeah, I love a little bit of a blowjob. I'll tell you what, I, my, my dream when I was a kid, when I was in like college, I, was, I would tell my girlfriend at the time, I was like, just wake me up sucking my dick. Yeah. Like, just wake me it's up. It's a nice thing to say. <laughs> and then she did it one time, and I was like, I like started hitting her on the head. I was like, what the fuck? I thought it was my roommate. I was yeah. like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> You didn't like the. Work? I was scared the fuck out of me. <laughs> to get, to get your, some give your dick sucked from, while you're asleep is a terrifying feeling. Really? I thought it would be like great. I thought you'd be like, like. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever gotten your dick sucked while you're sleeping? I had the wake up. Yeah, the wake up. Blow wake job. up blowjob. Like, were you asleep? I was. This is why we should be boyfriend boyfriend. Do you know how much fun we could have with just sex stuff? Like, if if we were gay, it would be. A fucking blast. Like if if we were gay, like if we were into it. That's true. That's true. It would be so much fucking you know, fun. I, I wish would, you could pick your sexuality. I would come on you and in you all the time <laughs> because you I... <laughs> know how much fun it would be to just come on each other when we were least expecting it. Oh, man, <laughs> what the fuck, dude? I thought we were watching Lost. <laughs> like, <laughs> someone's taking a shower. <laughs> I'd put it on your head and be like, here's your Rogaine. <laughs> Just fucking <laughs> smear it on your head. Brushing your teeth? You like taste your toothpaste? You came in the toothpaste, didn't you? <laughs> but you I, it's, it's been sitting with me how much you said you don't want to get cummed in, though. I think about that a lot. <laughs> Why do you think about it a lot? <laughs> Have you ever jacked off in a bathtub and then it, like, 
then you get out of the bathtub yeah. and then it's like in your hair yes and it's and you don't realize it and then someone's like did you get moose on your leg and you're like oh <laughs> it just dried on you but like in your ass hairs but what about in your asshole it would, it would like feeling about, the, the pump in your asshole so i had a girlfriend in college one time that uh we had sex and then she went to class i said how was class and she was oh it was great until you started falling out of me in class and i went what i yeah. didn't know that that happens that like yeah I thought it when it, once it went up there, it coagulated mm -hmm. and then held. Right now it drips out, drips out. Yeah, it's yeah. fucking gross. Yes, it's, it's kind of na it's nasty. Yeah, but imagine if it was dripping out of your asshole. I would love to do a deep. Can I tell you what I want? I want it. To, I want it my own segment, a your mom's house exclusive. Yeah, about women talking about getting cummed in, like celebrities, like Amy Schumer. The first time she got came in, the worst time she got came in. Like how many times she could, if you had to guess how many times you got came in. The awkward, exp I want, it's all about getting cummed in. I think I'm saying these words wrong. But that's the fun of the podcast. Yeah. And it's called, it's, and it's called, come talk to me with Bert <laughs> You know what's gonna make you really turned on though is you'll be sitting. You'll be like, you'll talk to a couple who will be like, yeah, you know, it feels weird. And then that first girl that sits there and tells you like, it's my favorite feeling in the world when I feel hot come. And then you're gonna be like, oh, you know who we should call? Nikki Glazer. I bet she'd do it. Let's. Can we bounce the idea off a of celebrity pod sure, podcaster? Sure, sure. Let's call Nikki Glazer and see. Um, if by the way, air fresheners are available on my website. What the fuck am I turned on to do? I'm such a fucking... The second you make a little money off merch, you're like, fuck it, let's double down. <laughs> Nikki Glazer's hanging out with her parents in... Uh, St. Louis, right? St. Louis, yeah. Yeah. Her sister's really attractive. I saw her. They went, they went kayaking. Hey, Nikki, what's up? I want to... I'm doing a podcast with Tom. I'm doing a podcast with Tom Segura. Okay, holy shit, I was going to say something I know else. exactly yeah, what yeah. you were going to say. Oh, I love you for stopping me. <laughs> okay, so, okay, you're my only friend I can run this by that would give me an honest answer. So you know how the, you know how there's this show, Hot Ones? Yes. Okay, I want to do my own kind of talk show. It's all with women, very progressive. It's All okay. I have is women guests. Okay. okay. It's Much like The View. I've always pictured you like producing a View type show. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Here's the pitch. The name of the show is Come Talk With Me. And it's, okay. And I have a fear of getting cummed in. So it's all about cum stories. <laughs> but from a woman's perspective. Yes. Yes. Please. Please. Okay. That's all. Okay. When, when this quarantine locks down and we can do one, you're my first guest. Um, I can't wait. God, I want to make so many jokes, but I'm sitting at the breakfast table with my dad. <laughs> it's, it's ooh, ooh. Put your dad on. Put your dad on. Can I listen to your dad's voice real quick? Have you heard her dad's yeah, voice? Dad, no. Um, dad. Tell me if this doesn't Bert sound Kreischer, like a DJ. Um, just called me from his podcast. Um, he wants to hear your voice. Come here. Where are you? Why are you hiding? His or dad's got Dr. a legit good Bert Bert voice. Bert. Hey, Bert. How you doing? Whoa. I know, right? Yeah. Good, uh, nice to meet you, Mr. Glazer. I've been listening to you on Nikki's stories, and I love your voice. Oh, thank you. That's uh, nice to hear. Are you a professional no, voiceover artist? Yeah, yeah. What do you do for a living that you, ha you talk like that? Uh, I Well, right now, I used to be in, uh, a v VP of marketing for a cable company, but now I, I play music. Really? So, I, yeah. And uh, I play, I'm playing a gig today for a bunch of retired people. I'm going to stroll window to window outside and serenade them. At a nursing home, <laughs> Nikki's Nikki's gonna come, and then she alerted the local media, so the local media is showing up too. So I'm gonna be a media darling today. Oh hell yeah! Well, well, I, I want to tell you, you did a great job raising Nikki. She is an absolute dream person. <laughs> I love her to death, and, uh, and and your voice is even better. And as a father of two daughters, <laughs> who's I'm in the middle of the struggle right now. I just want to say, uh, hats off to you. Oh, thanks. Yeah, Nikki tells me you're a fantastic father, so that's just, that's just, that's a good accolade coming from you. I'd rather it. her say I was a great comic, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> she says that too. I'm looking forward to that show she did with you, with uh, everybody. Say, say, I'm looking forward to the show you guys are putting together too. 
I'm looking forward to oh, the show. I'm looking forward to the show. Oh, Nikki wants me to say I'm looking forward to the show you guys are putting together, too. <laughs> <laughs> now I feel like a bad dad. All right. All right. Tell Nikki I love her. Thank you very much, Mr. Glazer. It was good talking to you. You All guys right. have a great day. Thank you. Good luck. See you. Coming soon. Come talk with me with Burt Kreiser. Come talk with yeah. me. And so, and so come talk. So how would you with like me? How would you start the show? Like, what would you do to introduce the idea? Like first. All right. So Nikki's in front of you. Hey, you know, the niceties are out of the way. And then you're like, so what's the first time you got? That's, that's it. I don't know. Uh, let's let's work this out. I like okay. this. And guys, hey, the way, hey, this is like a crowd produced show. So if you have great ideas, mm -hmm. please send them our way and we'll read them on the show and we'll figure this out. Did I you say did you say collagulated? Collagulated. Is that not the right word? <laughs> no. What's collag coagulated? Coagulated. Coagulated. Coagulated is like. There's no L. Coagulated. Oh, it's coagulated? Yeah. Dude, one time I, I had sex. I came in a girl. I came in a girl. We had put uh, a, a, a big couch and a love couch together. Right? Okay. That was our move. She would sleep on the love seat. I would sleep on the big couch. Like it was, and we, we had sex on that. Was a, I think it was one of the. I think it was one of the first times I legit camed in somebody. Camed? And it, and it coagulated. <laughs> it like it like turned into like 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 uh, like milk that had rotted. Like just like <laughs> I think about that so much. <laughs> When was the, okay, first question. When was the first time you heard about cum? Like, do you remember? I remember because every guy remembers the first time they came. It was terrifying for well, me. Well, I just, I started masturbating so young that, you know. How young were you? Six. What? Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah, I didn't know I was masturbating, you know. Because I, I was having orgasms, but you don't ejaculate because yeah. you're not producing any. So wait, how were you having orgasms? Because I was like, I fig I don't know how I, I figured out like how to rub my dickhead and I was humping like mattress and I would have full or I was like, ah, orgasm <laughs> and just being like, and then I remember sitting with one of my cousins and being like, so do you do that thing? You know, where you like, you pinch the foreskin and you twist it and then your body shakes and stuff. And he's like, what? <laughs> like I was trying to explain to him what I do. And he was like, no, we were kids. So we were like seven at that point, maybe eight, you know? Oh, so I didn't know for like years, like a few years, what I was doing. I just knew that like I did it in secret, you know? First orgasm I had was in a friend's pool and I was using the um, the the hose gun. Mm -hmm. I don't know how it started, but I know how it ended. <laughs> it was just like, a, I was like, that feels good. Oh, hey, oh, oh. And then it went, and I was like, oh my God. I he jizzed in the pool. No, no, no. I was probably I had to be over ten. I was t I was probably ten exactly, maybe a little bit older, maybe eleven. And I remember thinking I had figured out the key to this, the key to the earth, the key to life. Like mm -hmm. get, this is what the point of life is: is these. And um, I remember I got in the car with my dad, and we were going to pick up my aunt at the airport, and I was going to share it. I was going to be like, hey. I figured out the fucking key to life. And I go, Dad, I want to tell you something, but I want to let you know. And he goes, is this another one of your do stupid fucking ideas? And I was like, you know what? You don't get the secret. <laughs> and I didn't share it with him because he goes, is this another one of your stupid fucking ideas? Dude, I must have been exhausting to be around as a kid. <laughs> I remember one time I was in the, I was in the, I was <laughs> in the, in the, going to the airport to pick up my aunt again with my dad. And I said, uh, I can do magic. He was like, really? I said, oh, yeah. He was like, what can you do? And I said, watch this, dad. I'll take this piece of paper. I'll put it in my ear, and it'll come out my mouth. And he was like, I want to see it. So real quick, I shove a piece of paper in my mouth, right? Mm -hmm. I take the piece of paper. I put it in my ear, and then I pull this out of my mouth. And he goes, the, that's great. He goes, there's a piece of paper in your ear. <laughs> and I said, no, there's not. And he goes, bullshit. He's driving on the interstate. I go, no, there's not. And he goes, let me see your ear. And I go, okay. And I jam it in my ear, hard as fuck. And I go, look. And he goes, God damn it, I can't see the piece of paper. What, what did you do with the piece of paper? I go, nothing. And he goes, did you did you do it like sight of hand? And I go, no, it's a magic trick. So we're driving for another five minutes. And I start trying to get it out and I can't get it out. And then he hears me crying to myself. And he goes, it's in your ear, isn't it? <laughs> 
it's in my ear. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that was the first time I came. <laughs> Was it on the road with your dad? No, 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 no. <laughs> the story before. The first time something came out, I was in my garage. Oh. Who are you calling? No one. Hold on. I'll take a sip of Kool-Aid. Go ahead. Um, the Kool-Aid? You drink, you're drinking Kool-Aid to start your day? Really? It's so good. What kind? Red. Kool-Aid is fucking awesome. It really is awesome. <laughs> It's so good. Take a little, pour a little something for yourself. It's, wa it's watered down. It's not too bad. You really drink it's ice Kool cold. It's ice cold. Yeah. You are drinking Kool Aid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> You're drinking a fucking <laughs> 64 ounce Kool Soaking fucking wet. <laughs> that's, that's the hardest I've ever seen you laugh. <laughs> it's the hardest I've laughed. Okay, hold on. It's pretty good. It's, it's not that. It's good, right? It's good. <laughs> you should drink 64 ounces. I gotta drink two of them. I gotta drink two every day. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm crying and sweating uh, right now. I'm gonna fucking throw up. Oh. <laughs> you know how like you you don't realize how different you are until someone points it out? <laughs> oh. oh my god. I I need to I need to fucking lay down. <laughs> <laughs> Your eyes are so bloodshot right now. <laughs> I just love it. Oh. <laughs> 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 I don't know. Oh. I'm going to I'm going to be <laughs> cannot handle this <laughs> <laughs> so
So wait, take me through your morning. <laughs> <laughs> Just for people that don't know, it's 10 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so, <laughs> how does your day start? Okay. I get up. I make a, a double iced coffee. And I drink that. And then I, get, I ran four miles. And then I make a big one of these. <laughs> I get in the pool, I shower in the pool, and then I sip this throughout the day, and then I try to have one or two more of these. <laughs> <laughs> the pink lemonade's really good. <laughs> oh. The worst is that Isla and I, we, the two of us fucking murder these. Like to the point where when pandemic started, we had to get Leanne to go to Dollar Tree to get more Kool-Aid because we were going through so much Kool-Aid because we were just home. I didn't even know you were into Kool-Aid. Oh, I love it. You've never mentioned Kool-Aid before. Oh, I drink Kool-Aid every day. I love Kool-Aid. You drink Kool-Aid every day? Yeah, probably about 120 ounces. <laughs> <laughs> You don't think that's not adding calories though? No, <laughs> it's not. It's, it's low calorie Kool Aid. Yeah, no. They, most doctors recommend it. Oh my god! <clears throat> What's with the other beverages? What you you said? Oh, to- this is what I wanted to talk about. This is a so. There's a guy here that works here. His name's Chris. Yes. And how many calories are in Kool Aid per serving? A serving is what eight ounces, so about a hundred calories. I get low packet, uh, low calorie Kool Aid. Oh, I'm fucking sweating. I need to stop laughing. I'm taking my blood pressure medicine yet. <laughs> Wait, scroll back down. Go down. Hold on. Sugars, 25 grams per <laughs> serving. Wait, 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 wait. Look at the vitamin e- C though. Yeah, that's true. <sighs> oh my god, that's the that's might be the hardest we've laughed on this show ever. So I wanted to talk about this. I feel like I need to go outside. (laughs) No, no, no. We're fine. Okay. So you guys in the, in there, I'm a beverage guy. So I went through and I saw the beverages you have and I saw you have Pepsi. Pepsi is such an interesting choice of beverage. Yeah. Like there's certain people have a taste for Pepsi. You get it when your parents get divorced and you have to move in with an aunt and your aunt drinks Pepsi and then you're like. Pol Pot, Stalin, all those. Yeah. Mussolini. They're all Pepsi fans. For real? Yeah. That's really fucking... Is that, are you being serious? No. Oh, uh. So we went to one place, one town, and and we got there, and, the, and they were, the whole town just drank Pepsi. We was on tour. And I was like, that's interesting. And they're like, yeah, this is a Pepsi town. And I was like, what do you mean? And they're like, there were Pepsi towns, and then there were Coke towns. Like, Atlanta is a Coke town, right? Uh-huh. Well, that, that's headquarters. Right. And yeah. there's headquarters. Check out headquarters of Pepsi, would you, Nadav? Please. So it was, I think it was probably upstate New York where we were, and they only served Pepsi. And we were like, that's really interesting. Mm-hmm. And then we all had Pepsi. We were like, wow, Pepsi's really good. <clears throat> it's such a different taste than Coke. Did you ever pick up on that, by the way, like, uh, along the same lines about how Coors is one of those beers where you're, you know, West. Yes. And you're, and like you go places, and then if you're asked for, if you're into Coors, like well, I had an uncle who drank Coors, and you, if you go, Usually, Eastern United States, and you say Coors, they'll be like, oh, fucking cool. Like, that Smoking the Bandit was all about Coors. Yeah. It was the idea was they wanted, because Coors had more alcohol in it than other beers. And so he had to run a case of Coors. In the, I think the whole point was the big truck was carrying Coors, and he was running to distract the, the cops so that the truck of Coors could make it to a party. Okay. So I'm always fascinated by different places in the country being attached to different brands and then that being their brand. Like my my da- my wife's hu- dad, my wife's dad is a Chevy guy. Mm-hmm. Like they do not drive Fords. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. I also feel like I saw Chevy be a thing more when I moved to the South. Yeah, and, like, and like, I like think it's Chevy because was... Ford is a Northern plant. I wish I could find the exact, but like, like and uh, some places, like the, they had a big problem at Burger King because they stopped flying the Confederate flag in Georgia mm-hmm. and in like the nineties, I think is Burger King st- said, we're not going to fly the Confederate flag. And I love Chris sandwiches. 
What sandwiches? Chris sandwiches. What's Chris sandwiches? Are you being serious? Wait, I don't know. Sausage, egg, and cheese, Chris sandwich. A Chris sandwich. Pull up a picture of a Chris sandwich. <clears throat> These are the best fucking sandwich breakfast sandwiches ever. Chris sandwiches from Burger King. Sausage, egg, and cheese, without a doubt, is the best sandwich ever. Okay. Oh, just look at this. Oh, oh, my oh like God. a croissant with a yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. my God, that is the. Wait, so did that when they took their flag down? You're like, I'm not going there anymore. I'm no, not no, 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 no. I tried to go there with some of my wife's family. Oh, and no, my not my wife's dad, but some of my wife's family, and they're like, we were going to the airport, and I said, just pull into Burger, Burger King. King, and they said, we don't go to Burger King. We were like, why not? And Leanne's like, just let it go. And I was like, no, wait, why don't we go to Burger King? And they go, they stopped behind the Confederate flag. And I go, I don't have a problem with that. Pulling the fucking Burger King. And they're like, we won't go to Burger King. And I was like, holy shit. And Leanne's like, just fucking go to McDonald's. And I was like, I don't like McDonald's. I guess McDonald's kept flying the Confederate flag. <clears throat> I guess. I don't know. I don't know. By the way, don't, yeah, don't, yeah, maybe. don't, yeah, <laughs> don't quote me on this. This was one very drunk morning I had uh, it, when we first started dating. God, how do you not always... How, like, I wonder this about you. What? How do you not always feel sick and want to throw up? You know, it's so interesting. I got... I tied one on last night. You did? Like, legit. I opened a bottle of Buffalo Trace. Uh-huh. And, and legit had a cocktail. Uh-huh. <clears throat> did I did a Sam Adams thing. You know the Sam Adams things? I did one for my dad. So we drank a couple Boston lagers. Yeah. And, uh, and then our friends called up and they're like, Hey, we're making pizza. Do you want some pizza? And we got in the car, drank a bottle of wine over at their house, came back, had another little at the house Uh and then went to sleep. And I was like, fuck, we have two birds, one cave in the morning. I was like, okay, I know that I have to run. What time were you asleep by? Oh, I can tell you all my whoop. Yeah. I, I still am feeling it from laughing that hard. It's hard to come. It's hard to like. Oh, it's gonna take a while. Um, it's it's catching up from seven oh, ten. Yeah. Um, but I went to bed. Uh, I went to. <laughs> you went to bed, and then I went to bed probably around midnight, one o'clock. Mm-hmm. I'm listening to a book on tape right now, so I was listening to that, and uh, woke up around seven, and then Leanne was already working out, and I went on the treadmill and I ran a quick four miles, a real quick four miles, hard. Oh, sweat a lot. Poured sweat, got in the pool, showered, <clears throat> outdoor shower, Kool Aid, sweating, pouring sweat in the car. Called Cowhead, talked about the COVID, uh-huh. and then uh, and then pulled in here late as usual. Yeah, it's fine. I'm always ten minutes late to this. It's all right, but I'm not um, late to anything else. I'm, I'm usually not late at all for anything. Feel appreciate it. <clears throat> well, yeah, this is like a little, a yeah. little, yeah. But I wanted to taste Pepsi. Okay. I haven't had I haven't had Pepsi in forever. Pour some in there for <clears throat> versus Diet Coke. Tell me if you could tell the difference between Pepsi or Diet Coke. Okay. Like I'm someone when when we all get sodas, like the family gets sodas, yeah, and we start passing them around. I will drink a full soda before I realize, oh, this isn't my drink. <laughs> <laughs> all right, give me a little bit of that. Okay, and then some <laughs> DC in there. Okay. And then how about, might as well go for that. Well, that has a very distinct taste, though. Uh, yeah, but yeah, even still, I, I can never tell the difference between Dr. Pepper. And what? Like and Diet Dr. And Pepper? Diet, and Diet Coke. Like, I'll no. give me... I drank... Oh, I know the okay. story I wanted to tell you. So I already forgot which is which. It's, it's all good. This is Dr. Pepper. This is Diet Coke. Okay. This is Pepsi. Okay. So I'll drink from that side. You drink from that side. <laughs> or you can just drink out of the can. Oh, yeah. I can do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All so, right, what do you want to start with, Dr. Pepper? Do- start with Dr. Pepper. Okay. You don't think that's a very distinct taste? It's a really distinct taste. Yeah. What's the overwhelming flavor of that? Um, Will you type in flavor of the d- profile of Dr. Pepper? <clears throat> Dr. Pepper, it's a, it's a... It tastes like it's a cousin it's cinnamon, of, of root beer, right? Is it cherry? All the flavors mixed together. Can you read that? Licorice. Okay. Oh, no, licorice. no. Caramel, blackberry, licorice, yeah. amaretto. It's a type of licorice Lemon, taste. molasses, sarsaparilla, pepper, plum, orange, nutmeg, cardamom. No, that. those are the 23 flavors that make Dr. Pepper. Don't you think licorice is what stands out, though? Do you ever hear that? No. No? 
No. Did you ever hear the guy that made Coke sold it to the Coke people, sold the ingredients, and did not make the fortune? I heard that. I don't know if that's <clears throat> true though. All right, let's try. Let's try Pepsi versus okay Dr Pepper. So Pepsi first. got more of a citrusy taste it's a lighter feel than it's a lighter feel than this it's sweeter it's sweeter it's in the back of your tongue mm -hmm. it's got a it's got a, a a hook on it on the yeah. back of your tongue all right diet coke yeah it's so much better to my palate that's so much better this is like that's the. A, that's a little. That's a little broader. Yeah, a little more. It's this a little, is a distinct taste. Yeah, you're right. So it ends up happening like it's like do you, you either have the, the desire to have those really specific tastes, or, this kind of, this feels like I don't know almost like. Like they were trying to make this and they were like it doesn't taste like it so let's just go in these other directions you know like they were yeah. trying to make this broader. Taste. Do you think we could make a soda? I mean, we could try, yeah. Do you want to try to make a soda? I so badly want to do that. How great would that be if we came up with our own soda? Because you know what it is. It's, all it is is just note-taking. Is All you need is someone that's meticulous with notes. Mm -hmm. So you, you fuck around and you put your own measurements in. We just got to get wasted, have a laboratory. I don't think we have to get wasted, though, to do it. But I think it's probably better if you're wasted. I don't think. Why? Because just get fucking wasted. And then all you need is a note taker. What was that young lady that used to work with you that's friends with my, Hannah from the heart? Hannah. The, Allie. Allie. Mm -hmm. Bet she's a good note taker. She's a good note taker. Get Allie, put her in a lab coat, get her some goggles, and then me and you, fucking trashed, coming up with fucking flavors. All you got to do, if I swear to God, we picked these 23 flavors, cardamom, anise, is that not how you say it? On the east? Oh, I don't know what you're saying. On the east. <laughs> on the east. Pick nutmeg, 23 flavors. Licorice. Nutmeg. And then, and then, you know what we do? We throw in the flavors from Juicy Fruit. We throw those in? Throw those in. Grapefruit, banana. I bet we could come up with a sports <laughs> soda. A very refreshing you sports soda. walk around with a half gallon of Kool-Aid on you. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody would ever guess that. <sighs> yeah. I bet we could come up with a pretty badass soda. What would we call it? I don't um, like the word cola. Uh, Killer Mike came up with Crip Cola. Cola? Cola bothers me. Cola. What do you like? I like Dr. Pepper. I like oh, I got Diet you. Coke. I like Pepsi. I like Papa. But don't say soda. Or... No, no, no. Soda. LaCroix is a great one. LaCroix really makes you feel like you're in the islands. Okay. Can you believe LaCroix is a thing? How do they fucking... I mean, we drink so many LaCroix at our house. Yeah. And it's just like soda water in a can. That's it. Yeah. We got to start really branding ourselves out there. We've already got a flip-flop line. We're thinking about doing a shoe line for you. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's where we go. Let's talk about shoes. Guess who fucking hit me up? Who? Trinidad James. What do you say? I swear to God, he asked me to do his... He's got a parenting podcast. Yeah. And so uh, I'm doing it today at three. You are? Yeah, he I think it's I think it's uh, just FaceTime on uh on Instagram stories. Sure. But um so let's talk about shoes. So I'm reading this book, The Great Book of Shoes, mm -hmm. The Great Book of Sneakers. Yeah. And I'm starting he to He knows at, a lot about sneakers. I, there is it's really fascinating when you look at kind of the progress of sneakers and where sneakers have gone and what what attracts people to sneakers. Yeah. So if you could make your own signature sneaker, what would you be what would you go after? What would you model it after? Hmm. I mean, because there's, I'll, I'll be honest with you, and this is going to be sacrilege to most sneaker people. Yeah. There's not really much to a Jordan, meaning like Jordans I have found are very uncomfortable shoes. Really? Yeah. Like a Jordan is, a, when you talk about like a, an Air Force One, yeah. I feel like there's more product in an Air Force One. Well, here's the thing. There's a big difference because you, like a lot of people like myself, you know, if you're talking about like the retro ones or something, those aren't about like comfort the ultimate comfort no it's like no. the style but i'm saying if you actually get in jordans as they 
evolved. Oh, like, like oh yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 let became, me take that back. You're yeah, right. Yeah, they became much more comfortable. They became much more comfortable, but I don't think they're attractive. I, I'm with you. The, the, the Air Force, the Jordan ones. Keep those sh- sneakers up, by the way, Nadav, please. The the old Jordans. That's some beautiful shoe. Yeah. You, do you see in the movie in the t- the uh, the the documentary he did the last dance last dance when he did the one show shoe in the old school shoes yeah he played the last game in the whatchamacallit in the the, ones and he's like my feet are fucking killing bleeding he said they're full of blood (laughs) yeah because and you can when you put those on like i have a bunch of those ones you put them on you're like oh i mean this is for walking around but if i were to try to play basketball on this right now this would suck yeah it would really they're not they're not supportive but those like those right there that the cursor's on, those are comfortable as shit to play in. Those for real? Right oh yeah, for sure. And 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 like the, all the ones that have come out in the last decade are really made for playing, you know, high level basketball, and and they have the most advanced technology, so they're they're way more. But the, yeah, the early ones would definitely not be like that. So Nike SBs are my favorite shoe. Yeah, those are comfortable. They're man. The mo- they're so comfortable. Like I remember putting one on for the first time. Yeah. And and I, I had done uh, an Ice House Chronicles with you and Joe and I probably Red Band and Joey. And we were talking about what shoes we wore on stage. And I was like, oh, I wear boots. I always wore boots on stage. And <laughs> fucking typical Joe, he goes, that's the dumbest shoe to wear on stage. And I was like, what, what do you mean? He goes, what if you have to fight? And I was like, huh? And he was like, how are you going to like, you have no traction. Those things, you'll be all over the place. Someone could kill you in those. You got to stop wearing boots. And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like you can't wear a tie around Joe because all he sees is you as a victim. Yeah. Like if you put a tie on, he's like, oh, I just fucking take that and strangle you. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, what are you gonna wear a tie for? And you're like, oh, I guess I'm done wearing ties. <laughs> and so you and so I said to you, I go, what do you wear? And you were like, oh, Air Force Ones or sneakers. You were and yeah. I was like, oh. And I did not wear. I didn't own. That's right. I used to see you in boots all the time. I did not own sneakers. I forgot. I did not own a pair of sneakers. Really? I never wore them. I wore flip flops or boots. That's it. I never wore sneakers. That's some real white guy shit. It's fucking straight up. Yeah. And so I was like, I was doing Birth Conquer at the time. And I was, I said to Leanne, I was like, I should get some sneakers. And she was like, okay. And so I went to Val Surf and I was like, do you guys have like a good, like comfortable sneaker? And they gave me a pair of Nike SBs and I fucking loved them. Yeah. And then I was done. And then, and then what happened is I went, I went to Atlanta to do a show and I put on my boots and I started getting plantar fasciitis from them, like because I was so comfortable in the Nike Air Force, Nike SB, SBs. Yeah. The one I couldn't go back to boots, and I and then now I've been in sneakers ever since. The SBs are super comfortable, man. I did, I did, I had custom pair for my last special. Mm-hmm. Special before that, I had Nike, uh, jo- I had Jordans on. Yeah, black Jordans. I really liked them, but uh, but I had th- Jordans for the first two, and then I had Y threes for the third. Y three. It's an Adidas. Yash, uh, you know, what is it? Yoshi Yamamoto? Yo, no. Yamamoto, right? Y3 is, uh, I think that's his name, isn't it? Yeah. Yo, Wait, yeah let me Yoshi see a picture. Yamamoto. Well, he makes all kinds, but I had like a very, like a specific kind on. I'll tell you what I'm really loving right now are Adidas, uh, the Ultra Boosts. Is it yeah, Ultra Boosts? Yeah, they make Ultra Boosts. Yeah, yeah. But I like, they have, they have like, uh, special ultra boosts that you can get that are like you'll get in sneaker shops Mm -hmm. that are different uh different kind they're not really like ultra boosts they're kind of just like some sort of adidas type thing but like that kind of but different netting and they're really fucking comfortable the ultra boosts i like the pure boosts i even liked too the pure boosts yeah because ultra boost is like supposed to be the top one i like the pure boost even type in pure boost i'd love to see a pure boost i think i might that might be what i like too yeah super comfortable yeah 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 so if you were going to make a signature shoe what would you what 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 are your favorite things from different shoes that you would put into this shoe well i think it's all about like it's the the look you like so style wise and then comfort would you make a shoe you could wear with shorts you can't really wear jordans with shorts well i can't can't. no i can only wear flip-flops with shorts why because i don't it's like yeah I mean, I like there's I like low cuts, you know, for like a like a like an Air Force One style shoe for shorts, right? Yeah, like a not a high top, but high tops. I can't wear. Work I, for some I can't. High tops are so cumbersome for me, like to take on and off. Oh, those are the Tiffany 
See the blue and black ones? Those are Tiffany, the diamond SBs. Right there? Those are fucking awesome. Those I haven't good. bought shoes all of quarantine. Really? I, I did. I not bought one pair of shoes. I bought a... F you did? Yeah. I mean, because it's easy online, you know? You just have shit. shit so deep. how would you... What kind you know of shoe what, would you Do you know make? what Trinidad James shipped to me? No. Oh. He shipped me four pairs of shoes that are... <laughs> So when you do the, the, their sneaker show, they bring up like new designs and they're like, Hey, what, here, what do you think of this, of this shoe? And it's like, like flip, skip or drip, you know, kind of thing where you're like, uh -huh. I like it. But I didn't, I didn't usually you go, I was supposed to be in New York to do their show. And you it did was it like, I watched, I yeah, watched it. Yeah. It was on zoom. So there's this one part. You're definitely code talking to them. Keep going. What's that? You're like, Oh yeah. Homeboy. I was not, yo, yeah, homeboy. Pull it up, pull it up. You, you were code talking a little bit. No, it wasn't. A little bit. A little bit. What are you talking about? <laughs> See, the way you're talking now is white, and then when you were talking to them, you're like, yeah, 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 dope, fly, son. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so they bring up this first shoe, though. Did I ever tell you about, like, I, never mind, I can't tell yeah, you yeah, about yeah. it. They bring up the first shoe, and I'm looking on, on my laptop, and it's in one little square, and I was like, Oh yeah, that's hot. I just got it. Yeah. He just code talked. You yeah. just go. Oh yeah, that's hot. Yeah. Keep going. <laughs> so I'm like, I go drip or whatever the thing is. And they're like, really? And then I go, well, can you like make this bigger? But I've already said it's, <laughs> it's a hot shoe. And then they do it. And I'm like, nah. And they're like, nah, you already said it was hot. So, <laughs> so I was like, nah, I go, can't take that back. I go, oh shit. And then they're all like, this shoe is terrible. Like they, so then they start clowning me and they're like, I cannot believe you. I was like, come on, man. So I go, just, <laughs> I take it back. They're like, you can't take it back. You said it was hot. And they're like, this is the worst shoe. And they had just destroy the shoe. He sent me four pairs of that shoe. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, well, I don't think I know enough about Trinidad James. Yeah. Like, I want to learn more about him. You're going to find like out today. I just like his music. Yeah. Like his, the, I, I remember, I don't know how I got turned on to him. And I remember telling someone from Atlanta that I liked him. And they yeah. were like, how the fuck do you know Trinidad James? And I was like, what do you mean? Apparently, he was selling a mixtape. He was working at a clothing store in one of the malls in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And he was selling his mixtape out of that thing. So he was hot on like the streets before he was like big yeah. in his label. And he's a fashion icon. He really is into fashion. Oh, yeah, man. Like hardcore. Dude, Dude. all gold, everything. His, I, his... I want that to be my summer look. His... his... Uh, shoe game is actually completely world class. This guy has has everything and knows about everything. It's wild. You ever like you realize that when when uh, you think you like something and then you meet somebody who really likes it. Like I mean, I I feel like that about almost everything that I feel strongly that I like, and I realize I'm like so I you know like let's say I like shoes. I don't like shoes like this dude does. I like. Yeah. Hip hop, I don't like it like Russell Peters does, like where he's like, do you know who oh, played yeah. drums on that beat? I'm like, no, and like he'll know the whole history of everything. I like cars, not like Matt Farah and those guys where they're just yeah. telling you about this so wait, type what's of your displacement. Thing then? What's from, your thing then that you can, that you can out geek somebody? That's the thing I was thinking about. I really don't know. I don't know if I don't know if I have that level of, but I appreciate. I actually recognizing what you like and are a fan of makes you appreciate other people's fandom even if you don't align with it meaning the fact that i really know that i like cars and you know certain music and stuff then i go like you know what i guess these wrestling fans aren't such tiktoks i mean they are but yeah. i get it you know like like that's just what they're into they're you know i wish i was i wish i was into wrestling really you definitely fit the mold are you kidding me you know, I'm writing this self-help book, and it basically the first two chapters are how to turn yourself into a professional wrestler. Really? Oh, basically. I didn't realize that's what I was writing. And then Leanne's like, are you making them into professional wrestlers, or is this a self-help book? And I was like, uh, I don't know. I was like, for real? And she's like, yeah, this is really ridiculous. She's like, this you should not put this in the book. This is not. What are you putting in there? Oh, the first chapter is give yourself a nickname. <laughs> the self-help book. And I was all about, because I think all great men have great nicknames. And if you don't have a good nickname, it's hard to get by. It's hard to get by? Yeah, if you don't have a great nickname. Like, you need a great nickname. It's really tough to be a dude with just a name like Ari Shafir. And then you're like, eh, is there any more thing else to you? I'm Jewish. And you're like, eh, something like, give me some razzle-dazzle. What do we know about you? Ari Shafir. And you're like, yeah, come on, nothing. So you feel like he needs a nickname. Uh, Why don't we give him one? Okay. What do you want to call him? 
Um, the nose. <laughs> no, no, no. It's got to be... It's best if you give yourself a nickname. Oh, okay. So, like, if you give yourself your nickname, then you can kind of dictate your narrative. And, and it's great if it's organic. Like, you can't just go, oh, I'm Bert Big Dick Kreischer. And they're like, yeah. Meh. My, by the way, I've had buddies give them... I've had so many friends give themselves nicknames. And, like, my buddy Scott O'Brien, when we were in ninth grade, we went out to the end of the island where everyone was... And we dr were drinking beers... And I was like, so Scott, and he goes, it's Obi now. And we're like, what? He was like, they call me Obi. And we were like, and we thought it was over. We're like, okay, Obi. And we called him Obi for the rest of his life. And and then he was like, hey, th not the way you say it. But then it became his real name. And then it was his nickname. My buddy Maurice, Weecho. It was a great fucking nickname. I've heard you say Weecho. Weecho is a great fucking nickname. What did you go by back then, though? You must have given yourself a nickname. There's no way you were walking around nicknameless. I was, well, I was nature boy for a little while because I used to take my shirt off and be barefoot. Uh, I was Edward Penis Lips for a little bit. Edward Penis Lips? The B-Man. B-Man was a big one. Like, B-Man was one I gave myself. I used to, I used to yell, B-Man kills it in parties. And they're like, who's the B-Man? I go, I don't know. Sounds like he kills it. <laughs> B-Man kills it. <laughs> idiot I was at a party I just go B-Man kills it <laughs> my buddy uh, uh. and then when I went to Russia I gave myself the machine and then machines paid some dividends yeah no I know yeah <laughs> Did we you, all know you heard that story yeah yeah we all know <laughs> would you call yourself if you didn't have that now would you give yourself a nickname now like mm -hmm. Kool-Aid or what would you call yourself now <laughs> <laughs> hey Kool-Aid. <laughs> That's a great nickname. Yeah. Hey Kool-Aid. Yeah. <laughs> What's up? And they'd be like, why do you call him? He drinks a gallon a day. <laughs> Trinidad James real name isn't Trinidad James, but that's no. a great fucking name. Yeah, it's a good name. I mean rappers, you know. Rappers like, yeah. rappers all have the dorkiest fucking names. Real names. Method Man. Yeah. His real name, Clifford. Clifford Smith. Yep. Uh DMX, Earl. Earl Simmons. Master P, Percy. Percy's yep. a great fucking name. Percy, yeah. Percy would be a great fucking nickname. Percy's a great name. Yeah. There's like some old school uh, black names. Like Percy, you hear Roosevelt, you know? Dude. Be named Roosevelt. There was a guy that played football at Florida State. Lincoln. Chauncey. Chauncey's a great fucking name. Yeah. God. Wait, who'd you say? Played at Florida Lincoln. State? Lincoln. Uh, Lincoln. What was his name? Lincoln. Uh, he ended up going pro. Uh, fuck, I don't know. Yeah, th those uh, there were some great black guys. Got some great fucking names back in like like guys that are more my age. I think about uh, uh, a Snoop is Calvin Calvin, Calvin Broadus. Yeah, that's a great fucking name. That's a good Calvin name. Broadus. That's a good it's name. it's amazing that he changed it to Snoop Doggy Dog. Yeah, I remember hearing Snoop Doggy Dog and going, "That doesn't sound that tough." And they're like, "He's actually a really good rapper." Yeah, I was like, "Yeah, but it sounds kind of stupid." And they're like, "His it, don't worry if you listen to his raps, it fits in." Yeah. Yeah, Calvin Broadus is a great fucking name. It's a good name. Um, Will Smith was Will Smith. That's true. <laughs> okay. What are you yeah. looking up? Rappers' names? Dante Terrell Smith. Who's that? Oh, Most, Most Def. Def. Yeah. Most Def's a great. Most Def's a fucking. Most dude, Def is a great. The, one of the fucking coolest things ever was Chappelle show when he had Most Def. Yasin Bey. Isn't that what he goes by now? Oh. Right? He changed it again? Yeah. Because he's Muslim. You know Dave Chappelle's Muslim? Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Mm -hmm. He doesn't seem like it. What does that mean? He smokes weeds and drinks. Oh. I don't think you can do that. That's probably a good point. Yeah, maybe I'll go Muslim. Maybe you'll go Muslim. Pull up the tenements of Muslim and Muslim. Uh, Islam? Islam. Pull up the tenements of Islam. Five pillars of Islam. Oh, All great. right, sell it to me, Tommy. All right. <laughs> go ahead and make that bigger for me. Five Dude, okay, already I'm just All on right. the further record. I can get behind a religion that's only got five things I got to follow. Okay, pretty easy. Ready? Pretty easy. Wrap your head around it. Go All ahead. All right. First of all, you just have to be down with there is no God but God, and Muhammad is the messenger of God. That's central. Done. I got it. Okay. Um, you. This oh, are we one... going to get murdered for this? <laughs> We're not mocking this religion right now. We're not... Can we get murdered for talking about Islam? Uh... Is that one of the p pillars? All right, keep coming. Keep, I might be Islamic by the end of this, so 
Are you going to be down? This one's kind of a, a, a lot here. The Salat, the praying five times a day facing Mecca. You got to do dawn, noon, mid-afternoon, sunset, and after dark. That's a lot of if commitment. If we can incorporate snacks, maybe. <laughs> Have like a granola bar while we pray. Let's finish this segment. Let's see. Let's talk about something else. So <laughs> Wait, sell me on a different religion. Don't okay. tell me the religion. Pull it up. You sell it to me. I'll tell you if it's a smash or pass. Okay. You go ahead and pull that up for me. Um, look up one. By the way, this is how we definitely get canceled. Just mocking everyone's religion. <laughs> give me a religion. Yeah. And I'll tell you if I'm into it. And give me some far-fetched ones. Don't give me Catholicism. I'm already there. Okay. How do you feel about you got to refrain from harming living beings? I'm in. Refrain from taking that which is not freely given. Refrain from taking that. Which is See, not... that's usually the shit I like. The hard to get stuff. This is this is going to be the struggle of this one. Okay, I'm a pass. What religion did I just pass on? And you refrain from sexual misconduct, and refrain. This one's going to be real tough for you. From speech such as lying, idle chatter, malicious gossip, or harsh speech. Oh, so what am I supposed to do? Not talk? I'm going to hardcore pass on this religion. That okay. religion is Buddhism. Oh, oh, for real? Yeah. God, I thought I, I, I maybe just branding wise, I thought Buddhism would have worked <laughs> for me. <laughs> Oh, real? it does say you drink lots of Kool-Aid, so that was you could do that. God damn it! Did I just pass on Buddhism? Yeah. Fuck! I really thought I would have been a great Buddhist. Yeah, I would have thought that you would have thought that. <laughs> <laughs> I would have thought Wait, that. I maybe I'm okay. Keep, give me All another. Right. I like this. Give me another religion. Let me tell you what the. Uh, okay, are you ready for this one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, God exists. Done. I can't believe that's even in there. There is only one God. Yeah, I can do that. There are no other gods. Same, same. God can't be subdivided into different persons. We get it. There's one fucking God. Uh, you should worship that one only only God. Holy fuck. He is transcendent. God is transcendent. I don't know what that God means. God doesn't take it. have a body. Yeah, fine. And um, Germans are dicks. Is this Jewish? Yeah. <laughs> you, want, you want in? Uh, I'll take it. All right. I'll, I, so I can't believe someone I, in there can give you the rundown pretty good if you want to know. <laughs> oh, I said Jewish, not know Israeli. Right. The, uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that's so interesting. I pass on Buddhism. I thought I would have been. Leave a total that up. Buddhist. Leave that up. All right. Let me see if you like this one. Okay. Here we go. All right. Truth is eternal. Okay. Yeah. Um. Wait. Hold on. Everyone should strive to achieve Dharma. What's Dharma? Let's stop asking questions. I'm in. I'll take it. Individual souls are immortal. I love it. The goal of the individual soul is moksha. I don't know what moksha is. I'm already being a little lost in this religion, which yeah. makes me like it. Yep. Keep going. Um, Give me it, something about boozer sex. All right. There are many gods. Instead of that whole, no, there's only one bullshit we were there's dealing many with. many gods? There are many gods. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll take it. Um, karma's real. Oh, I like this religion. I think you're in. Yeah, what is it? Hindu. Shut up. Yeah. Is Kumail Hindu? I do not believe so. No. Who's? Do we know a Hindu? Type in famous Hindus. I want to see who I'm hanging out with. I guess famous Hindis. In like, type in 2020. <laughs> I'm a bunch of fucking lifers. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Who's the most famous? Call Kumail real quick. He was raised Muslim. You sure? Yes. He's married to a white chick. I don't think you're allowed to do that. He was more, he was raised hardcore Muslim, and then he passed. And then, well, he moved. They moved to the states, and he grew away from religion, like as he oh, like got everyone old. else yeah. does. No, so who we don't know any fame, famous is is Russell Peters Hindu? What was the one I just picked? Uh, Hindu? Yeah, is he? No, Russell's not. His, his parents might have been. I would love to know some famous Hindus just so I can know who I'd see at meetings. Russell would know somebody. Call him. Let's call him. Call him. Do you think he'll answer my phone call? He didn't answer yours last time. Nikki Glazer answered ours. This has been a really easy episode. <laughs> I still need to take a walk. Russell. I know a lot of Russells. Pull up that last one for me because I want to read them those descriptions. You know, the tenants of the last one you had up. No. 
the that 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 yeah. When do you think the last time Russell had Kool Aid was? A while ago. You think it's within the quarantine? No. You think he's, you don't think he's in Kool Aid in quarantine? Mm-mm. What the fuck? Is it's because he lives in? Uh, oh, I guess I guess probably shouldn't say where he lives. It's hard to get cell reception where he is. Please leave your message okay. for. Give me another one. Give me another last religion. Okay. Okay. All right, here are the basic... Give me something aggressive, too. Yeah, this is something that some of the... Okay, so basic beliefs are that human beings are immortal. I already am practically sold on this religion. Yeah. A person's life experience transcends a single lifetime. Oh. And that human beings possess infinite capabilities. Dude. Is this Mickey Mantle gene? Uh, Already. I think we found my religion. Keep going. Give me something more. This is really, really good for you. Um... We have, let's see, there's two major divisions of the mind. The reactive mind is thought to absorb all pain and emotional trauma, while the analytical mind is a rational mecha- mechanism which is responsible for consciousness. I did that at Rite Aid last night. I did that at Rite Aid last night. Girls, they ca- I called and I said, are you open? Do you have my blood pressure medicine? She said, yeah. And I got there and she goes, oh, pharmacist just went on duty. Kind of flippant. And I processed it, angry. And then the reflective mind said, I am not going to cause drama for this woman in her life. I said, how about I come by tomorrow morning? She went, really? And I went, yeah. She goes, you don't need it tonight? I said, well, I don't feel like waiting 20 minutes. She said, it'll be ready first thing in the morning. And we went like that. I flipped it. So I'm already doing this religion. So you're in. Yeah. Scientology. For real? Yep. Mm Mm-hmm. Do you think I'm famous enough to not have to do the sea boring shit? Yeah. Who do we know that's Scientologists? We know a few. Who? who? Well, Joe. Ooh, you're not supposed to say that. Uh, <laughs> but who does? When you say they, who do you mean? Who said they? Scientologists. Hate. I don't think they like psychology. Oh. What did he say? I don't know. That Scientologists don't like psychology. But perfect. I fucking hate therapy. Dude. Well, my question is, could I get into Scientology, skip all the grunt work, all the fucking pledge stuff, mm-hmm. and go straight to being famous, hanging out with Tom Cruise? Leah Remini would know. Do we have Leah? Re- I have Leah Remini's number. You do? Yeah, I do. That'd be great if you could call her right now. I have fucking Leah Remini's number. Please call her. How do you spell? How would you think I would have spelled Leah when I met her? L e a or L e a h. L E A H no Leah I would L E A not L E A how do you think I would have spelled Remini uh start with an R I don't have it R E you don't have it no it I was probably a text and I was like and I erased all my texts if you could go if they said so let's just say we get an offer from our agents to be Scientologists Mm-hmm. And they're like, hey, we got a place for you in Scientology. Yep. You're going top level. Like, just so you know, you're board members. Like, you don't yep. have to do all the fucking bullshit. Okay. All you got to do is show up to be in a couple moves with John Travolta, go on a yacht with Tom Cruise, do some photo ops. We're going to get you new wives, just like more that are like, like that are like more Scientology friendly, yep. younger, yep. not too young, but young, <laughs> younger. Like 29. Oh, like I'll take 32. I'll okay. take 32. We can have two kids still, but it's still going to be touch and go on the last one. And so, and, uh, and by the way, we want to help your career. All you got to do is go to the Scientology center on Franklin, like once a month, stop by, hit the gym, whatever. Are you in? And we'll help your career. Okay. Right. Sure. What the fuck? Why isn't Scientology kind of makes sense. Like do, the way you pitched it to me. And by the way, you didn't bring up aliens, but I kind of believe in them already. So like, like I, like I do believe, I believe more in aliens than I do heaven in real life. I want to point out something. What? You and Nadav got along really well this episode. We did. Yeah. Way to go, guys. I think it's, I took it my reflective side. Yeah. I also want to say this episode has been brought to you by Kool-Aid. It's really good. You can drink it whenever you want. It's not too sweet and it's good for you. The variety packs come in five different flavors. Five calories each. Just tear it open, throw it, in, throw it into a 64-inch growler, 
and you are hydrated for the whole day with taste. Kool-Aid. Hey, Kool-Aid. I would love a sponsorship from Kool-Aid for real. We just did one. If, if Kool-Aid, by the way, there are brands that I'm looking for mm -hmm. that like I've already conquered the flip-flop game. And so I would love to get into running shorts. <laughs> what? Okay. On the next episode of Two Bears, One Cave, Bert and Tom figure out what brands they're looking for sponsorships from. What's your favorite sweet treat? So uh, it's, I'm just gonna take a second, yeah, because I'm 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 really trying to my mouth's watering right now. Okay, <laughs> it depends what we're we're saying. Like, I will always go Oreos. Oreos okay. are Oreos a are home the run shit. down the line. They never let down, even if they're stale. They're even good dipped in milk. You know what Isla did the other day? She stuck a fork in the icing mm -hmm. and dipped it in milk that way. Oh. And then I go, what the fuck are you doing? And she was like, what? I was like, the kid can barely read a fucking book, but she's figured out Oreo dipping. Yeah. Oreo, I, I mean, I'd, I'd have to say you're given $5 to get treats for everyone. Like, and you're like, hey, we're, we're getting on, we're driving out to Malibu for the day. So, hey, Bert, run and go get treats. Just a, a sweet treat that everyone's going to like. It's Oreos. It's always Oreos. Oreos is are the shit. I I mean, I would almost also say that like donuts. Okay. I didn't know we were going like broad strokes. Yeah. yeah fucking donuts. God, donuts are so good. Blinkies donuts. The shit. Dude, they have a fucking Blinkies donut that's like a grape jelly donut, but it's folded. It's a great. Next time we come in here. Yeah. Let's grab some donuts. A hundred percent. Okay. A can you smash a bunch? How many think you can smash? Depends what kind of donuts we're talking. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Should we we'll eat do, on the next episode? Let's do it on the next episode. Is that, you mean for real the one? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. We got to run. This was a lot of fun. I love you guys. I love, I love you. you. Please keep drinking Kool-Aid. I will. Okay. <laughs> Bert and Tom. Tom and Bert. One goes topless while the other wears a shirt. Tom tells stories and Bert's the machine. There's not a chance in hell that they'll keep it clean. Here's what we call... Two bears, one cave. No scripts, a bit of booze, amateur partology. Dirty jokes, raunchy humor, no apologies. Here's what we call Two Bears, One Cave.